Welcome. Stay tuned because today I'm going to give you some reasons to be concerned about immigration. The left likes to claim that resistance to immigration is based on racism. I'm here to tell you there are very legitimate and rational reasons to be concerned about immigration that have absolutely nothing to do with racism. I'm Professor David Holden. I'm a military historian and a veteran. All these views are my own and in no way represent the U.S. Army or the U.S. government. So immigration has been part of human history. The barbarians from Central and Eastern Europe invaded the Roman Empire starting around 300 AD. You had vast amounts of Europeans migrate to the United States from the 1600s to the 1900s. Then you had forced resettlement and enslavement blacks coming from Africa, about 11 million, most of which about 10.5 million going to the Caribbean and South America with and about 500,000 coming to the United States. Within Soviet Russia, you had mass resettlement. So immigration or forced resettlement has happened throughout human history. And that's just to name a few that have transpired. Many were driven by desire for a better life, for economic opportunities. Some were fleeing war and famine, and some were forced to migrate. Okay, so let's get to the heart of the matter. Why should you care about immigration? Why does it matter to you? Well, let me ask you this question. What binds Americans together? Or, or any civilization for that matter? You kind of have a civilization and then under civilization, that's like the largest grouping of people. You have then after that you have a nation. So things that bind a civilization together are like Western civilization. That would be like language, religion, your laws, your customs, uh, your governmental structure. Those are the fundamental factors that that bind a civilization together. Then under that, more specifically, for a nation, you're looking at, again, religion and language, race, ethnicity, and perhaps creed. And for much of American history, it was an Anglo-Protestant core, right? There were other cultures within America, but you all, every nation, not just America, every nation has a core culture and then you have subcultures underneath that. But for America, race and ethnicity are no longer uniting factors. We're, we're very much a blended society, which comes down, that kind of leads you culture and creed. And race doesn't matter. What does matter though is culture because there are some cultures that are highly successful and economically prosperous. And then there are those societies that are not. So creed, is a product of culture. A creed of factors like the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. But currently there's attacks in America upon our culture. And these are concerning because they deconstruct structural support for American institutions. If you are an immigrant coming here and all you hear is that America is systemically racist, that it's structurally flawed, why would you want to support American institutions? Why do you want to buy into a system like that. But people want to move here in large numbers, so maybe they see a light that the left doesn't see because there's an awful lot of them wanting to come here. Nevertheless, immigrants coming here need to accept the culture and institutions that made America so appealing for them in the first place. But if your goal is to remake the entire U.S. system, which certainly seems to be the intent of the left today, and this helps make sense of the thrust of their policies in the United States, then a great lever in which to bring about this social, cultural, and institutional change is to open up the gates of the border. Because by doing so, we talked about the factors that unite a nation and hold it together. Well, if you wanted to weaken those bonds, the way you would do that would be to open up the borders, because now you're opening up people from diverse backgrounds, cultures, languages, and customs into the United States. And by doing this, you weaken the bonds that hold America together. Now, some on the left are undoubtedly driven by a desire to help the less fortunate. And that's an admirable desire, but it has to be balanced against other factors like social stability and economic benefit. Furthermore, those coming into the United States need to assimilate. Now, assimilation is a bad word for the left. They often equate it with racism or, or cultural superiority. Yet assimilation is important to social stability and national health. Unless, of course, your end state is to dismantle U.S. institutions. Now, some elites in America see themselves as cosmopolitan, as citizens of the world, as multicultural. So there's a problem with this. There's nothing inherently wrong with multiculturalism, but it does pose some challenges because now you have an abundance of languages, religions, customs, and values 
all living under the same umbrella. The problem, of course, is when you are multicultural and you don't have a core culture, then what are you building upon or what's uniting you all together? And this isn't a problem unique to America. And in fact, many countries have immigration laws far stricter than the United States. And I'll get to those in a little bit. But most countries do have a core culture, right? The Chinese, the Japanese, the Germans, the Swedes, upon which everybody that immigrates to that country assimilates into. But many of these countries like China, Japan, Germany, and the Nordic countries that I've mentioned are much more homogeneous, right? They're, they're largely made up of a particular race and ethnicity. So the question becomes, what binds a country, a heterogeneous society like the United States, it's got, that is so diverse, what binds us all together, right? If we don't have a core cultural value set, then what holds you together? Thomas Sowell makes the argument that not all cultures are equal. You know, over time, some have, have risen and, and others have fallen. There's nothing inherently virtuous about a culture. In other words, you don't preserve a culture just to preserve a culture. It should serve a benefit to its people. Thomas Sowell specifically cites like Chinese, Jewish, and Japanese cultures and how successful throughout much of time they have been. In the last video, we talked about how Asians in America have to score 250 points higher than blacks or Hispanics to get into Harvard. There's nothing inherently superior about the Asian race. It's, it all comes down to culture. The Asians in America spend more time studying than any other demographic. And as a result, they're more productive and more successful than whites, even though they're a minority. And Jews, likewise, have been very successful and have experienced untold tragedy throughout the 20th century. As we talked about, some cultures rise, some fall. There's nothing inherently superior about a culture over time. You know, for up until the 1600s, the Chinese were far in advance of much of the world. You know, they invented gunpowder, and I believe they invented the compass and, and the printing press. And then they turned inward and, and fell behind. The Spanish and Ottoman empires were, again, far in advance of other parts of Europe and then fell into the backwaters of history. Cultures exist and serve important functions both in nations and civilizations. Today, cultural appropriation is touted as something that's, that's terrible and, and, and shouldn't be done. But the Chinese invented gunpowder. They invented the printing press. They invented the compass. Should the rest of the world not use those? The US military created the internet. Should the rest of the world not use that? The US invented the light bulb, flight, and mass production were perfected in the United States. Should the rest of the world not use those? Some cultures are more successful than others. And the ability to adopt things from other cultures to make you more successful is important for your nation as it moves forward. The Protestant work ethic has been an American cultural strength, that you're gonna make something of yourself through hard work and discipline to achieve the American dream. Conversely, recently in the news, French lost out on a submarine contract with the Australians, and the Australians cited cultural differences. Specifically, they said they took too long lunch breaks they are always late to meetings, and then they would go on vacation for a month. The French lost out on their contract. In many respects, it was like the opposite of the Protestant work ethic, and the Australians said, we would like to work with someone that's more culturally like us, the Americans and the British. That is a modern example of how culture has a profound effect. Some cultures, especially in the Middle East, relegate their better half, women, to the house, and as a result, they lose out on 50% of the nation's brain power because they're not allowed to participate largely in, in economic life within those societies. The Scottish were once a backwards people and it wasn't until the 1600s, according to Thomas Sowell, that you really see a significant cultural shift where they began to adopt many of those Anglo-Saxon Protestant values and as a result, produced some of the great philosophical and scientific thinkers of our time, Adam Smith, David Hume, and James Watt's uh, steam engine. You had a backwards culture that then adopted values from another culture and became more successful. And they got rid of the ones that didn't work for them. The point is that culture matters and a willingness to adopt what works and disregard what doesn't work. In this respect, it's important that people immigrating to America adopt our values and systems that make us successful to make America more competitive. And many of the people at the border today are unskilled workers in an age when our economy is becoming more autonomous. So if you have too many people immigrate too quickly and too vast of numbers in the United States, that can have an adverse effect on American society and culture. Are the people at the border skilled or unskilled workers? Because many nations make it very clear that they want skilled workers that speak their language. If you're in Germany, they want skilled immigrants that speak German. If you said that in the United States, people would claim that you were being racist. But there's a good reason for wanting skilled workers in an age when the economy is becoming more autonomous and there's less unskilled work and that they're an economic benefit to the country. Many countries throughout the world make that a prerequisite for immigrating to the country, that you're going to be an economic benefit. And, and finally, there's a problem with multiculturalism. Think about it this way. If everybody's living under one umbrella, right, many different cultures, and you have different 
languages, different religions, different customs, different values, then you don't have anything binding you together, right? Nothing's pulling you all in the same direction. You all have different ends in mind, different ways of living. And without that foundation, the entire system begins to break apart. And now I think you could make the argument in America, there, there isn't a religion binding us together anymore. Protestantism, Catholicism is, is on the wane. We're very much a, a secular nation now. Language as well. We don't all speak English. In fact, in, in the West and Southwest, uh, Spanish is probably the dominant language or at least becoming the dominant language. What about culture? Well, many of the people at the border also come from a different culture. So what that leaves you with is creed. But then again, creed is a byproduct of culture. So that leaves you, what is holding you together? Economics, like I've got mine. But again, when you've got a, many unskilled people coming into the country, somebody has to pay for that and there's less unskilled work, what are you gonna do with all these people that now can't find a job? Economic progress seems like a very loose and superficial construct that's holding you together. And, and I don't think that that's a particularly robust one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below or visit davidwholden.com.